The Xtool F1 is really where it all began for Velf Creations. We bought that little laser with the hope of making projects, sharing settings, and helping people get creative. And it quickly became one of our all-time favorites. But now, it's time for an upgrade. All right, while we get this thing unboxed, a quick disclaimer. This video is not sponsored by Xtool, and the F2 was not provided to us. Just like our original F1, we bought this laser with our own money so we can give you our honest experience. We're also splitting this into two parts. This first video is all about the unboxing and quick setup. Part two, which is already live, will cover our first projects, test results, settings, and of course, the PDF you all love so much. So once you're done here, make sure to check that one out too. Anyways, bad stickers aside, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss more videos on the Xtool F2, all our other lasers, 3D printers, and everything else we've got coming. And let us know in the comments what you want us to cover next. Up to this point in the unboxing, you've probably noticed that, aside from the new orange color, the F2 looks very similar to the F1. Everything inside was packaged really nicely and held securely. The lid was taped down to keep everything in place. And underneath, we found some extra foam with the base plate, the alignment bracket, and what looks like a quarter inch piece of black acrylic. We are definitely curious to see how well it can cut through that. With all that being said, the internals of the F2 get a really nice upgrade, so let's talk specs. The F2 takes everything we loved about the F1 and turns it up. You're getting a 15 watt blue light laser instead of 10, a 5 watt IR instead of 2, a speed boost from 4,000 to 6,000 millimeters per second, a brand new camera for easier positioning, and two built-in lights to illuminate the entire work area. Along with the F2, there were four accessory boxes. The largest one includes the flexible exhaust pipe and a Phillips screwdriver. Another box has a small material sample pack with scratch paper, plywood, and even some stainless steel keychains to test on. And the last two boxes are simple just the power cables and a USB cable. Now let's take a closer look at the F2 itself. Starting on the back, the ports look very similar to the F1. You've got the main power switch, the power cable port, the accessory ports, and the safety USB key. But new to the F2 is a port for the external controller that comes with the Xtool Ultra line of lasers, which is actually a really cool addition. Right above all of that is the exhaust fan, and it does a solid job. You can run the exhaust pipe straight out a window or connect it directly to a smoke purifier. Over on the right side of the laser, you'll find another accessory port that works with the new RA3 Pro rotary. We'll cover that more in the project video. And underneath that is the USB-C port. We'll plug a USB cable into this port to make our first connection to the laser and get the Wi-Fi set up. On the top, the F2 keeps the nice handle that makes moving around the laser super easy. Finally on the left is the emergency stop button that will be engaged when you first open the laser, so twist it to disengage before use. On the inside, we really like that Xtool added a little tag on the lens cover. With the F1, we saw a lot of users forget to remove that cover, or not even realize it was there, before running the laser. This tag makes it way more obvious and helps prevent any accidental melted lens covers. Now we can get a much closer look at that all new camera next to the lens. Xtool lists this as a 50 megapixel camera, which is pretty impressive for a laser at this price point. But we're curious, is a camera a big selling point for you on a machine like this, or do you still prefer using the live framing option? Here we can also see the red dot used to set focus. For the F2, Xtool also added height markings in both centimeters and inches. This lets you measure the height of your material and manually input it to set the focus. But honestly, we're not really sure in what scenario that would be more useful than just using the focusing dots, which are way faster and more accurate. If you've got a use case for this, let us know in the comments. We're curious. As always, you get this alignment bracket that helps position your piece perfectly every single time without needing to realign your design between engravings. It would be really cool if Xtool included a second one, or at least sold them separately. So, whatever you do, don't lose it. You'll also get this cutting plate that's used for, you guessed it, cutting material. Just make sure to line the slots up with the exhaust fan to help improve smoke extraction. The F2 does have a slightly larger engraving area, but the base plate size is still the same. 
So for everyone wondering if your F1 jigs will fit, they do. And even better, Xtool now includes this little rubber piece. You pop the plate in front first and then drop in the back, and it locks your jigs in way more securely. No more wobble. We tested it with our two favorite jigs and had zero issues, which is great to see because we really didn't want to reprint all of them or come up with adapters. We've also been creating a whole series of jigs and adapters to use with the larger ultra lasers, as well as the comm marker machines we have. If digital or even physical versions of those are something you'd be interested in, let us know in the comments. With the F2 powered on, you can really see that nice new lighting. And now we can head over to the computer to get everything connected. To get started, you'll need to plug in a USB-C cable. The other end is USB-A, so if your computer doesn't have that port, you'll need an adapter. We're just using this as a one-time connection to set up the Wi-Fi, but you can also choose to leave it plugged in and always run the machine over USB if you prefer. Xtool Studio is the latest version of Xtool software, previously known as Xtool Creative Space. In the top right corner, we can click the connection icon and then add device. This will detect the F2 and automatically walk us through the first time calibration. This calibration makes sure the laser engraves exactly where the software says it will. To get started, we need to grab a sheet of the black scratch paper from the material pack and tape it down to the base plate. After that, the software prompts us to close the lid of the F2 and press engrave. The laser will mark two crosshairs on the scratch paper and those markings will show up inside Xtool Studio. From here, we just drag the two on-screen markers to line up as closely as possible with the camera overlay, one for the blue light laser and one for the infrared laser. After clicking Next, the F2 will automatically adjust the height of the module until the blue focusing dot and the red focusing dot overlap. Once those are aligned, calibration is complete and everything looks great. From here, we also get a notification that Wi-Fi networks are available. We are prompted to enter our Wi-Fi name and password and with a click of the button, we are connected with Wi-Fi and can remove the USB cable. As mentioned before, we're putting up a part two with some actual projects using the F2, but before we wrap up this video, we wanted to go over a few of the new camera features and run a quick marking test. With one button click, the camera view refreshes and you can immediately see the base plate. What really impressed us is just how fast that refresh actually is. With previous lasers, this could take five, sometimes even 10 seconds, but on the F2, it updates almost instantly, a really nice improvement. Lastly, we saw this test that Xtool did on their live stream, and we had to give it a try. We placed down another sheet of scratch paper and went into Xtool's material library, which we really love because you can find settings for just about anything. We selected scratch paper, added a small circle to the workspace, and ran a quick mark. After that, we refreshed the camera view to check how accurate the placement was. And honestly, pretty good. We were happy with that. Next, we moved the sheet of paper and refreshed the view again. This lets us reposition that same circle as close as possible to the original marking to try an overlapping engrave. Then we hit start. One more refresh, and we could see that the second marking overlapped the first. It just made the circle a tiny bit thicker, meaning our alignment was just slightly off. Still very impressive accuracy. But that's all for this video. Remember to head over to part two to see our first Xtool F2 projects. Thanks for watching and stay creative.